Hi, I'm Taylor Farmer here with the Clemson Insider on this week's Taylor's Take. Here to analyze the Clemson football game versus Boston College is sideline reporter and anchor for the ACC Network, Katie George. Thanks for being here today, Katie. Of course, happy to join you. Arguably the biggest talk right now with Clemson football is their recent drop in the AP poll. Last year's national championship team, who was ranked number one to begin this year, has dropped to number four. And while fans are really concerned about that, the Clemson football team, along with the coaches, aren't concerned. I caught up with Darian Rencher earlier this week who says that what they're doing is internal, they're just focused on the next game. Mm -hmm. And it's not really factoring into what they're doing, but he does say that maybe if they're blowing teams out by 60 <laughs> rather than just winning by 40, then maybe they'd be ranked a little higher. But what are your thoughts on Clemson's placement? Well, I don't think fans have anything to worry about. Uh, they're still perfect. 22 games, consecutive wins is hard to do. I don't care who you are and what league that you're in. Uh, I, like you, talked to a few players, Amari Rogers, Tremaine Ingram, and I just asked them, you know, how does it feel? Are you guys focused on it? Because you can't control how people are going to rank you. You can, can just control how you produce and your product on the field. And they both said the same thing that Rencher did is the fact of we can just focus on ourselves, we can continue to play hard and get wins, and at the end, all that matters is what the college football playoff committee ranks us at. Mm -hmm. And so it's interesting. I know that they don't get on social media as much, and they're not allowed to post throughout the season, which I think is a great um, tactic by the team to do because it keeps you focused and locked in. Um, but he, Amari Rogers was the one who said, we still hear it, we still mm -hmm. see it, we still read it. Um, because that's the day and age. You have everything on your phone or your computer right in front of you. And he said, so it's harder than it looks to be able to block out the noise. Mm -hmm. But he said, we really talked as a team, focusing in and making sure that we're you know, prepared in our day-to-day -day, uh, work ethic. And then we go out and we take care of business. And then hopefully you know, that takes care of itself moving forward. Mm -hmm. But I don't think it's necessarily a concern. I think it's a little bit of a slight, though, to Clemson because they're beating teams by 28 points. Mm -hmm. um, on average, and to see them slip each week in the polls is kind of crazy to me, um, but it's a motivating factor. So they don't need bulletin board material, that's for sure. Yeah, and Clemson's ranked fifth in the nation in defense right now. Mm -hmm. They're leading the ACC in scoring and passing defense. Who for Clemson's defense stands out to you? Well, I think in total, they've done a phenomenal job so far this season. I remember having the first game and talking to Brent Venables before Clemson took on Georgia Tech at home. And his biggest concern was the depth at the linebacker position and then obviously the front uh, and the defensive ends and the defensive tackles because they lost so many to Sunday football. Mm -hmm. uh, but who sticks out? Isaiah Simmons, I think what anybody would tell you. I mean, he's a freak of an athlete. The way that they line him up, um, sometimes in the middle at linebacker, sometimes outside the tackle as a blitzer. I mean, sometimes he lines up as a free safety 15 yards behind the line of scrimmage. So, to be able to take a guy and, and see the versatility and potential that Brett Venable sees in him and then to be able to coach him in so many different ways uh, is pretty impressive. So that's a kid I definitely think we'll be watching on Sundays and he's got a really bright future because he gets it mm -hmm. uh, and he's just very impressive. I agree. And Boston College is really good on the ground and rushing mm -hmm. the football and even against um, top ranked teams in run defense like North mm -hmm. Carolina State. They're still rushing for 429 yards. <laughs> yeah. So how is Clemson football going to stop that this weekend? Well, I think Clemson football's defense is better than NC State's. Mm -hmm. uh, but to your point, I think NC State up until that point had um, kept people from rushing more than 67 yards a game, which is crazy. And then they go for more than 400 against mm -hmm. them. They've got a one-two punch, obviously, and A.J. Dillon. And then with um, Bailey behind him, David Bailey behind him. and so. Just because A.J. Dillon goes out for a blow for a couple plays, you cannot let off the gas because you've got Bailey coming in behind him. Uh, and I think that's what makes them effective. And then you're also talking about not just stopping powerful running backs. They're almost 250 pounds. I mean, that is a lot of force coming at you every single time. So I think that they, Clemson obviously has to stand tough. Stopping the run, first and foremost, is their priority. They've said that. Uh, but you've got to be really, really strong with your tackling, and you've got to go for their feet. Uh, and I think if you wrap them up on their legs, that's how you stop a big running back that, that is that powerful. Mm -hmm. And Boston College is 4-3 and three, while Clemson is 7-0. Oh. Mm -hmm. But Coach Sweeney says that they're going to be a tough competitor. And Trevor Lawrence said they're one of the more physical teams in mm -hmm. the ACC and always a tough matchup for Clemson. So even though that Boston College has a few losses, while Clemson doesn't, 
Boston College leads Clemson in um, pass rushing with their sixth in the nation, mm -hmm. Clemson's tenth. So what do you think the outcome of this weekend will be? I think it'll be a good game. I hope for a good game um, because as a broadcaster, that's always what you want to see because it makes it more exciting. Um, the outcome, I definitely think Clemson walks away with a big win. I think they're a 35-point favorite or something crazy like that, and I wouldn't be surprised to see that. This is going to be the first time that they really face a phenomenal running back, an NFL caliber guy in A.J. Dillon, so that'll be good to see how the defense is able to contain him. Uh, but when you look at Clemson top to bottom, especially on the offensive side, they just have so many athletes. Um, and I just don't think that BC can match that athleticism, especially on the offensive side. I mean, I think the biggest disparity is at wide receiver as compared to BC's secondary is mm -hmm. can the secondary keep up and maintain, you know, Justin Ross uh, or Mari Rogers, um, Joseph Ngata, you know, guys like that. Um, I just don't think that they can. Rain could play a factor in it. That is in the forecast. I think that works to BC's benefit uh, because if Clemson doesn't feel as comfortable throwing long shots downfield, maybe the secondary for BC gets a little break there. So it'll be interesting to see how rain kind of plays a factor for both teams. Yeah. And going a little off topic, mm -hmm. I played college volleyball. I know yeah. you played college volleyball at Louisville. Mm -hmm. How has your transition been from being a D1 athlete, getting covered by some media, mm -hmm. and now you're the media covering others? Yeah, it's interesting. I think I learned a lot by being a student athlete and having media members come and cover practice or games and going through interviews. And so that taught me one side of it. But I think having transitioned to this side where you're the interviewer and you're finding stories and getting to know these players, I think there's a mutual respect when I meet these players because they know that I've been there uh, and they know that I know what the daily grind looks like. And I was juggling classes, workouts, practices, just like they are. Mm -hmm. And so when they know that I was an athlete too, I think that that really helps and gives them an immediate kind of respect level, which I obviously very much yeah. appreciate. So I think being a student athlete um, is invaluable because you know what to look for on sidelines. Mm -hmm. You were a part of huddles. You knew what you were listening to, what you were looking at. And so that's kind of helping me navigate on the sidelines when I'm working football games. Okay, awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much for being on of the course. show today. Yeah. I'm Taylor Farmer here with Katie George on Taylor's Take. Make sure to keep up for all things Clemson sports here on the Clemson Insider.